Hi, I'm Jason O'Dell, and today I want to talk about using the AF on button technique with Nikon digital SLRs. Now, if you've got a Nikon D200, D2, D3, D300, you've got a camera that has a little button on the back that says AF on. And if you have a D80 or a D90 or an earlier camera, you've got a custom menu option to enable the AE AF lock button, the exposure lock button, to serve as an AF on button. There's a couple of different reasons why you might want to use the AF on button. The first reason and the biggest reason is to decouple the shutter release from focus operation. With your shutter release button, you know the half press of it activates autofocus and then the full press of the shutter release trips the shutter, takes the picture. Well, there might be times where you want to decouple those two functions from a single button by placing the autofocus control only to this button on the back of the camera. You can have control over autofocus and then control over the shutter. Another reason why you might want to do that is because the shutter release button is what activates VR vibration reduction if you have a VR lens. So you can do autofocus tracking with the AF on button without initializing VR and draining your battery in your camera. The other reason why using the AF on button is so great is it allows you to take advantage of the best of both worlds of Nikon's autofocusing system. Nikon's focusing system has two different ways of activating the focus motors. The first me mechanism is called single servo and that's where you can take a picture, compose, and shoot. And that's great for things like portraits where your subject isn't moving, you want to lock focus on a part of the frame with an AF sensor, and then recompose and take the picture. The other mode on the camera is continuous servo focus mode. And you'll want to use that when your subject is moving, you want to track fast action. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to use both modes simultaneously without having to change any switches or go into the menu items on your camera. By using the AF on button and setting it up properly, you can set your camera to always be in continuous servo mode so it's always ready for action, but get the benefit of being able to lock focus down whenever you want and using it like single servo mode. Let's see how you do that by setting up your camera in this way. All right, so I've got my D3S here, and let's take a look at what we need to do in camera menus to set up to use the AF on technique properly. The first thing that you'll want to do to set up your camera is to put the camera into continuous servo mode. And depending on your camera model, this is the D3S, there'll be a little three position switch on the front of the camera and it has C, S, and M. What you want to do is put it all the way up into the C position. That's for continuous. If your camera is, doesn't have C, S, and M, if it just has AF and manual settings, then you'll need to go into the menus and set your autofocus servo mode to be continuous. Now we're ready to set up the menus for the AF on technique. It's very important that you set your camera up this way, otherwise you won't get the best of both worlds. So I'm going to engage the menu on my D3S, okay, and what I want to do is go to the custom settings or the pencil, and I'm going to go to submenu A, which is autofocus. And then we, we need to set custom setting A1 to be release priority. That's for continuous servo mode. You want to be in release priority. That means when you press the shutter release, the camera is going to fire regardless of whether or not it thinks something is in focus. This is critical because if you have it in focus priority mode and you move an active autofocus point off of your subject, the camera is going to think that your subject isn't in focus and it's not going to fire. So we set autofocus AFC A1 to release priority and we click OK. And then what I want to do is go down to custom setting A5 on the D3. It might be a slightly different one, but it's going to be again in bank A here. And it's AF activation. And by default, it's going to say shutter slash AF on. That's the normal setting. It allows you to, to engage autofocus with either button. 
I'm going to set this to AF on only, and again, I'm going to press OK. Once you've done that, your camera is set up to use this technique. It'll only engage autofocus if I press the button on the back of the camera. It won't engage autofocus from the shutter release. So now that our camera has been set up to properly utilize the AF on button only as our focus control, we need to do a little practice. Let me show you how it works. When I want to use the, the equivalent of single servo mode, all I need to do is look through the camera, press the AF on button, and then release it with my thumb, recompose, and shoot. If I want to shoot in continuous mode, where I've got a moving subject that I want to track, all I have to do is find my subject, put a focus point on it, and then hold in the AF on button as long as I want to track focus, and then I can just shoot away. The trick is knowing when to release your thumb from the AF on button. If you do that and you've got your camera set up the way I've shown you, then all you need to do is leave it in continuous servo mode and have the AF on button. It does take some practice. And remember, if you're using a VR lens, you'll want to give that half press of the shutter to engage the VR before you actually shoot. It needs a moment to stabilize. But this is a great way of setting up your camera uh, for both action and portraiture. And then um, the only problem you'll run into is if you have to give your camera to somebody else who's not familiar with the technique. But what I, I always leave my camera in this mode. It's great technique and it works very well for all kinds of photography, including landscapes, wildlife, sports, everything. So thanks again for joining me today. I appreciate your time. Check out my website at www.luminescentphoto.com.